A message from a Muslim to a Catholic priest part 2. 3. Trinity versus Monotheism For Muslims, the monotheism that is foundational to Islamic doctrine is known not only from Quranic revelation but also from reason. Islamic rejection of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity then flows from the conviction that this doctrine compromises God's unity and entails polytheism. They wrongly give Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit a share in God's exclusive rule of the world, and they devote worship to Jesus that is due only to Allah. Muslims reject Trinity, as it violates Allah's unity in a number of ways. These ways involve the Quranic explicit rejection of Trinity, Trinitarian doctrinal development as corruption of the message of Jesus, and rational deficiencies in the classical Trinitarian formulations. The Holy Quran includes several ayat that clearly state the position of Jesus and his mother Mary as humans. Allah, the Almighty says, addressing Jesus, when Allah will say, O Jesus, son of Mary, did you tell people, take me and my mother as gods besides Allah? He will say, Glory be to you. It is not for me to say what I have no right. Had I said so, you would have surely known it. You know what is within myself, whereas I do not know what is within yourself. Indeed, you are the all-knower of all unseen. Almeida 116 Remember that Allah will address Jesus son of Mary, peace be with him, on the day of rising and ask him whether he told people to worship him and his mother besides Allah. Jesus will reply, declaring Allah's purity. It was not right for me to tell them anything but the truth. If I all had said that you would know it, because nothing is hidden from you. You know what I keep hidden within myself, but I do not know what is with you. You are the only one who knows everything that is hidden and everything that is apparent. Almeida 116 The Holy Quran also denies that Jesus is the Son of Allah and that God is. 3. Allah the Almighty says, O people of the book, do not go to extremes in your religion. And do not say about Allah but the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah, and his word that he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say three, Trinity. Cease, that is better for you. Indeed Allah is the only one God. Glory be to him, far exalted is he, to have a son. To him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is on earth, and sufficient is Allah as a disposer of affairs. Al Nisa 171. Say, O Messenger, to the Christians who receive the gospel, do not overstep the limits in your religion, and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only Allah's messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word be, and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, The gods are three. Avoid saying this false statement, and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is his. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of his creation. Anisa 171 Other ayat of the Holy Quran imply state that calling Christ as the Son of Allah is unbelief and that worshipping Christ as a Lord is an act of polytheism. The Jews say, Ezra is the Son of Allah. And the Christians say, The Messiah is the Son of Allah. These are mere words that they utter, imitating the words of the disbelievers before them. May Allah ruin them, how can they be deluded? They have taken their rabbis and monks as lords besides Allah, as well as the Messiah, Son of Mary, even though they were commanded to worship only one God. None has the right to be worshipped except him, glorified is he far above what they associate with him. al 30-31 The Jews and the Christians associate partners with Allah. The Jews do so by claiming that Uzair is the son of Allah, and the Christians do so by claiming that the Messiah, Jesus, is the son of Allah. What they say with their own mouths is simply made up without any proof from Allah. By saying such things, they are similar to the idolaters before them, who said that the angels were the daughters of Allah. Allah is far above such things may Allah destroy them. How can they turn away from the clear truth to falsehood? The Jews made their rabbis lords instead of Allah, as did the Christians with their monks, by allowing them to permit what Allah had forbidden them and forbidding what Allah had allowed for them. And the Christians made the Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, a god next to Allah. 
as well as Uzair and Jesus the son of Mary, to worship him alone, and not to associate anything with him. He, glory be to him, is the only God, and there is nothing worthy of worship except him. He is, glory be to him, sacred, far above having any partner that these idolaters and others claim. At Taba, 30-31 Muslims believe in one God, but Christians believe in three gods, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Assuming that there are three gods raises many logical questions. Do these gods always agree? Do they never disagree? Do they agree on various issues such as having rain, storms, or earthquakes in certain places? If they all agree at all times, so why are there three? Or do you think that each of them has a separate job? Are they just like the Hindus who believe in three gods, one for creation, one for maintenance, and one for destruction? From the Islamic point of view, this description of God is disgraceful, offensive, and ridiculous. Islam is primarily based on the belief that a Muslim does not associate any entity at all with Allah, the Almighty. Having established that Christians believe in the three enjoined gods, they also worship other gods such as popes, clergymen, and saints at their homes and churches. They seek help and forgiveness from them. Many bishops and nuns prostrate for the Pope while in Islam prostration is an act of worship that is exclusively done for Allah alone. Allah is high above their claims. They say, Allah has taken a son. Glory be to him. Rather, to him belongs all that is in the heavens and earth all are devoutly obedient to him. Al-Baqarah 116 The Jews, the Christians and the idolaters, who worship others alongside Allah, said that Allah had taken a son. He is far above and beyond such a thing because he has none of his creation, and no one has a son unless he is needy, and to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. All created beings are his servants, in submission to him, glory be to him. They are his servants, and he deals with them as he willis. Al-Baqarah 116 4. Crucifixion Muslims believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, was either killed nor crucified. The Holy Quran refutes this story completely as Allah says, Dot and for their saying, We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they did not kill him nor did they crucify him, but it was made to appear to them so. Even those who dispute about it are in doubt, they have no certain knowledge other than conjecture. But they certainly did not kill him. Alnisa 157-158 I curse them because they proudly, but falsely said, We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. They did not kill him as they claimed, nor did they crucify him, but they killed and crucified a man whom Allah made to resemble Jesus, so they thought the person who was killed was Jesus. Those Jews who claim to have killed him and those Christians who surrendered him over to them are in doubt and confusion regarding the matter. They have no knowledge, but make guesses that are of no worth against the truth. Truly, they did not kill Jesus nor crucify him. Instead, Allah saved Jesus from their plot and raised him in body and spirit to himself. Allah is mighty in his dominion, and nothing can overpower him. He is wise in his planning, decisions, and laws. Anisa 157-158 However, Christian doctrines and books always mention that Jesus was killed on the cross to save the world, and he was happy for that. How can this be true when Jesus, according to the Bible, was weeping and crying in the garden asking God to help him and save him from them? This clearly contradicts the claim that Jesus was happy to die on the cross to save the world. The Jews believed that Jesus was a traitor to them and he was a bad man, so they tried every possible means to kill him. They claimed that they crucified him and he died on the cross. But the Muslims believe that Allah gave Jesus the same appearance of that of Judas the Iscariot, the one who revealed Jesus' location to those persecuting him. He was then replaced as Jesus and the executioners thought the victim was Jesus causing everyone to believe that Jesus was crucified. Even if we accept that Jesus is Son of God, how can it be that God did not save his only Son? Or, why was not the God able to protect himself? It is noteworthy that the Holy Quran and the Hadith, recorded sayings and acts of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, support that belief. It came in the Hadith, Allah's Messenger, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. 
by the one in whose hand is myself, definitely the son of Miriam will soon descend among you as a just judge, and he will break the cross, kill the swine, and abolish the Josiah. And wealth will be so abundant that no one will accept it, until a single prostration will be better than the world and everything in it. Al-Bakari The above hadith essentially suggests that Jesus will return as a just judge between truth and falsehood. Breaking the cross, killing the swine, and so on simply mean that he will correct the false doctrines and beliefs spread about him and his teachings among his followers. Consequently, many of them will follow him. And thus, the followers of Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Jesus, peace be upon both of them, will be united into one Ummah, nation. This is the purpose of Jesus' return to earth. In brief, the Holy Quran makes it clear that Allah saved Jesus from torture and death on the cross and that he will come back to earth as a just ruler. This is perfect in keeping with the biblical reference to Jesus' prayer to God to save him as well as to his second coming. According to the Bible, death by crucifixion is for the accursed one. So, one cannot imagine a respectable prophet of Allah being subjected to a death described by the Bible as accursed. All this simply points to the fact that Jesus, who was a prophet of Allah, was saved by Allah from the pain of torture and the shame of a death on the cross. 5. Jesus, Son of God or only a prophet Muslims believe that Jesus is a great messenger of Allah and he was sent to the children of Israel to complete the message of Moses. He and his mother were humans without any divine traits or qualities as the case is with all the messengers of Allah, peace be upon them. Conversely, one of the fundamental beliefs in Christianity is the literal sonship of Jesus Christ to God. This belief comes from two verses in John 3.16 and 5.1. If we assume that Jesus is the Son of God, would not he have carried? The same description and traits of a god? We know it is impossible to get a sheep from a lion or an elephant to give birth to a giraffe. If it is so, Jesus should look like his father the god, and Jesus should act and behave like god. But all his life, and during every aspect of it, Jesus acted exactly like a human. Allah, the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, The Messiah, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. There were messengers who passed away before him, and his mother was a woman of truth, they both ate food. See how we make our signs clear to them, yet see how they are deluded. Almeida 75 The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger like other messengers. Just as death occurs to other messengers, it will occur to him as well. His mother, Mary, was a truthful and sincere woman. Both of them were in need of and used to consume food. How can they be gods when they were in need of food? Look, O messenger, and think about how I make clear to them the signs indicating my oneness and the falsehood of their extremism in attributing lordship to others besides me. Despite this, they do not recognize these signs. Then look and think about how they are misled from the truth, despite these clear signs indicating my oneness. Almeida 75 However, unlike Muslims, the fact that Jesus has no father but only a mother is not a sufficient reason for the Christians to say that he is the son of Allah. Similarly, Adam and Eve have neither a mother nor a father, and still it is easy for Allah to create them. Allah states this fact in the ayah. The similitude of Jesus before Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust, then said to him, Be. And he was. Al-Imran 59 With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or mother. Allah simply said to him, Become a man. And he became as Allah willed. How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when you accept that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? Al Imran 59. Does not this mean that it is easier for Allah to create his prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, with one parent? Christians claim that Mary is a human but God's only son was inside her and sometimes they say that God himself was incarnated in her. That would never seem to be logical or convincing. Rather, it seems ridiculous. How would God or his son live inside one of his creatures? Jesus grew inside Mary and was fed from her own blood and after she gave birth to him, she carried him, took care of him and cleaned him as any mother does with her newborn baby. Does a God need a human to take care of him, here on earth? Does that sound right for God or his son to go through all that? In sharp contrast to the known life of Jesus, a God never eats, sleeps or gets tired. God does not need to go to the toilet, does not die, does not forget or makes mistakes or feels sorry. These are all human attributes, 
but Jesus has done them all. Even if you search the different Bibles, you will discover the contradiction regarding the claim of Jesus' sonship. For example, in Luke 4 verse 41, Jesus refused to be called the Son of God by demons. Do you think that Jesus would rebuke the demons, or anyone else for that matter, for telling the truth? Unquestionably, no. Jesus rebuked the demons because they were saying something false by calling him the Son of God. Also, if the demons knew that Jesus was the Christ, for Jesus to shut them up because they called him the Christ is a contradiction to Jesus' mission. In conclusion, the act of begetting is a physical act and such act is against God's nature. Allah, the Almighty, says the Holy Quran, It is not befitting for Allah to beget a son. Glory be to him. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, Be, and it is. Maryam, 35. It does not befit Allah to have a son, exalted and free he is from this. When he intends something, it is enough for him to say regarding this thing, be, and it most definitely becomes. So he who is like this is free from having a son. Maryam, 35. 6. Confession. Nowhere in Islam has it been stated that a specific person or group of individuals possess the authority to grant forgiveness. Unlike Christians who make confessions to a priest, Muslims do not make confessions to anyone but Allah, the Almighty, who says, It is he who accepts repentance from his slaves and pardons sins, and he knows all what you do. Al-Shura, 25. He, may he be glorified, is the one who accepts the repentance of his servants from disbelief and sins when they repent to him. He overlooks the wrongdoings that they committed. He knows everything that you do. Nothing of your actions are hidden from him, and he will give you the recompense for them. Ashura, 25. That is based on the creed of Islamic monotheism where the sole cause for everything in this world is Allah and so. No one can do anything without his permission especially granting forgiveness and pardon. Muslims only confess directly to Allah and ask forgiveness only from him. This came not only in the message of our Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, but by all the messengers of Allah including Jesus, peace be upon them all. It came in the Holy Quran that Prophet Noah ordered his people to direct their submission to Allah and to ask him to forgive them. I said, Seek forgiveness from your Lord. Indeed, he is most forgiving. Noah 10. Then I said to them, O my people, seek the forgiveness of your Lord by turning to him. Indeed, he, may he be glorified, is the oft forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents to him. Noah 10. The same procedure was made by Prophet Hud. To the people of Ad we sent their brother Hud. He said, O my people, worship Allah, you have no God other than him. You are but fabricators. Hud 50 Allah sent to the people of Ad their brother Hud, peace be upon him. He told them to worship Allah alone, and not to associate anyone with him. He told them that they had no real God other than him glory be to him, and that they were not telling the truth and claiming that he had a partner. HUD 50 O my people, seek forgiveness of your Lord and turn to him in repentance. He will send down upon you abundant rain from the sky, and will add strength to your strength. So do not turn away in wickedness. HUD 52 HUD told his people to ask for forgiveness from Allah, and to repent to him, away from their sins, the biggest of which was associating others with him. He would reward them by sending abundant rain and would add strength to their strength by increasing their descendants and wealth. He told them not to turn away from what he was calling them to, because they would then be wrongdoers due to their disbelief in Allah and rejection of what he brought to them. Hud 52 Prophet Sali also ordered his people to worship Allah and ask forgiveness from him directly. To the people of Thamud, we sent their brother Sali. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah, you have no God except him. It is he who brought you into being from the earth and settled you therein. So seek his forgiveness, then turn to him in repentance, for my Lord is ever near, all responsive. Hud 61 Allah sent to the people of the mud their brother Sali. He told his people to worship Allah alone, and that they had no God worthy of worship other than him. He created them from the clay of the earth when he created their father Adam from it, and made them settle in it. He told them to ask for forgiveness from him and that his Lord was near to those who devoted themselves to worshipping him, responding to their prayers. Hud 61 Prophet Shu'ab did the same, and to the people of Midian we sent their brother Shu'ab. He said, O my people, worship Allah, 
You have no God besides him. Do not give short measure or weight. I see that you are in prosperity, but I fear for you the punishment of an encompassing day. HUD 84 We sent to Mad and their brother, Shuab, who said, O my people, worship Allah alone. You have no other God that deserves to be worshipped besides him. Do not give people less than the measure of volume and weight when you deal with them. I see you in prosperity and with blessings, so do not change Allah's favor to you by committing sins. I fear for you the punishment of an encompassing day that will reach every one of you and from which you will not find any place to run to or seek refuge in. HUD 90 Seek forgiveness of your Lord and turn to Him in repentance. Indeed, my Lord is most merciful, most affectionate. HUD 90 This was also the message of Prophet Moses. And remember, when Musa Moses said to his people, O oh my people, verily, you have wronged yourselves by worshipping the calf. So turn in repentance to your Creator and kill yourselves, the innocent kill the wrongdoers among you, that will be better for you with your Lord. Then he accepted your repentance. Truly, he is the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. Al-Baqarah 54 Also, remember that Allah is allowing you to ask his forgiveness for worshipping the calf. When Moses, peace be upon him, told you that you had wronged yourselves by taking the calf as a god and worshipping it, were from the blessings of Allah. Moses told you to ask for forgiveness and repent to your Creator by some of you killing others, because turning to him in this way was better for you than persisting in disbelief, which would lead to an eternity in the fire of hell. So, you did this with Allah's approval, and he forgave you, for he is forgiving and merciful with his servants. Al-Baqarah, 54 However, in Catholicism, virtually these conditions are being neglected. Not to mention that the past history of the Catholic Church in the medieval ages clearly portrays the extreme deviation that took place after getting hold of such ranks and authorities and misusing them as a means of reaching personal goals and obtaining other material interests. Historians along with knowledgeable and enlightened Christians have endlessly condemned the behavior that took place at that particular period. The Church and the Fathers of the Church were particularly misled from their true religious duty some of which can be unfortunately seen in the present day. A few that can be pointed out are financial corruption, moral corruption, interrogating people's beliefs, torturing and punishing the opposition, selling and dealing forgiveness. Selling forgiveness by the priests first started when the church passed the rule that as atonement of their sins the penitents were to pay a certain amount of money. But along with that the church would also collect funds from the same person which gradually turned into an essential condition for anyone who wanted to confess and be pardoned from sin. This practice continued to the extent where confession became a mere formality, and simply a custom lacking any true substance, its main objective being to make money. This also lacks reasonable sense. For example, if someone steals something from his employer, should he go to his neighbor and apologize for what he had done rather than going directly to his employer? Definitely. There is no logic in doing so because the offense he committed was not against the neighbor who has no right to punish or forgive that action. Similarly, when a person commits a sin, offending Allah's law and decree, he should go directly to him and not to a priest. This is because the priest has no authority from Allah to punish or forgive people. Another important issue is that man's honor and respect is so valued and significant in Islam. A Muslim should only confess to his Lord as a gesture of repentance and asking for forgiveness for one will only obtain more respect and honor when he confesses to Allah. In Islam one does not have to disclose his sins, small or big, to anyone. He must keep his secrets, regarding his sins, to himself. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever covers up the fault of a Muslim, Allah will cover up his fault on the day of resurrection. Al-Bukhari and Muslim, 